clothing is a fun way to express personality and individual style. As designers pour their creativity into pieces with different patterns, silhouettes, and textures for people to wear. Yet the introduction and growth of the fast fashion industry has changed our relationship with our clothing, as trendy pieces have become all the more disposable and easy to swap out whenever we need. If you've noticed that your closet is getting too full, or want to pursue a more minimalistic lifestyle. This video will address commonly asked questions regarding building a minimalist wardrobe. Find a summarized version in the blog post below. And if you're looking to get more in-depth with your minimalist journey, I'd love to have you join my Patreon community for monthly Q&As and mini workshops, which helps support the work I do here on Simply by Christine. Find all the details below. But with that, let's go ahead and dive into how to create a minimalist wardrobe. First, let's start with the basics of deciding your style and color palette. Looking at previous pictures of yourself can help determine your favorite outfits and pieces that look best on you. Clothing ought to make you feel your best but it's also a good idea to be realistic about its practicality with your everyday lifestyle. So keep that in mind when thinking about personal style, especially if you have a more active lifestyle that requires you to move around. From there, consider building a mood board of outfits that inspire you. Choose outfits you think you could pull off based on your preferences and lifestyle with a few wild cards if you'd like to experiment. Observe what silhouettes you gravitate towards, what colors and textures you like, and take note of some keywords that describe those outfits. Some keywords could be edgy, modern, natural, flowy, etc. Are the outfits warm, cool, colorful, or neutral? Note that taking a month or so to develop this mood board and a game plan is better than doing it too quickly to make sure you're satisfied with your style of vision. When it comes to color, most minimalists prefer neutral tones as it's the most efficient way to mix and match the least number of pieces. Whites, blacks, and navy colored clothing are also quite flattering as it gives a classic and clean look on any skin tone. However, it's okay to play around with additional colors. You can keep it neutral and minimal by adding some natural beiges, sage, or denim, or add some colorful pops of yellow and red if you think those colors make you look and feel great. Again, looking back at previous photos of outfits will help you determine what colors look best on you, or you can always take a color quiz online to see what colors match your skin tone. Next, let's start curating your minimalist wardrobe and determine your staple pieces. There's no hard and fast rule for the number of pieces a minimalist closet should have, as everyone's journey is different. However, I found that three to four pieces of each clothing type is a good start for anyone new to minimalist living. Of the three to four pieces in each category, be sure that at least two of those pieces are neutral colored or easy to match, and then feel free to add one or two statement pieces that might be more bold or colorful. Try to keep each piece a different color to maximize a few pieces in your closet. Looking back at your mood board will also remind yourself of what color combinations you like. Playing with different fabrics and textures is also a great way to stretch your closet a bit further, and choosing subtle but interesting patterns can also help too. Some clothing categories to consider are tank tops, short sleeve shirts, sweaters, jackets, pants, shorts, and dresses. I'll link some capsule closet resources in the blog post as well, 
if you're looking for a list or some structure to help you plan. Also, be sure to shop your closet first and see if you have some pieces you love that will work before jumping into buying any new clothing. One more note is that if you live in an area with seasonal changes, it's okay to have separate capsules for the seasons. However, if you want to stretch out your wardrobe to fit all four seasons, invest in pieces that you can layer. Having quality undershirts, camisoles, long sleeve turtlenecks or leggings work wonders for colder weather, and you can go without them once the weather gets warmer. Once you figure out your style and staple pieces, it's time to declutter what you don't need. Owning less helps keep your life a little lighter, as there's less to worry about and manage. Decluttering your closet once a year is usually a reasonable time frame to gauge whether certain clothing pieces are being used. Right off the bat, you can declutter those items that you haven't worn a fair number of times in the past year, as well as pieces that don't fit you well or are uncomfortable. Take the time also to repair pieces, as a simple stitch or sewing job can do the trick to help your clothes last longer. For sentimental items, feel free to put these in a suitcase or storage bin and allow them to stay in your home for a few months or so. And the next time you declutter, go back to determine whether or not it's time to let go. It's not the easiest to declutter sentimental items, but usually a picture of yourself wearing that unique wedding dress or favorite childhood shirt can do the trick. It's best to declutter pieces by selling them, if in good condition, even though it takes more work. However, if you're unable to sell, call your local homeless shelters or food banks to find out their needs and donate accordingly. If you have pieces beyond repair and need to recycle them, check out the blog post below for links to specific recycling centers as every city or town will have different options. After you've decluttered and made some room, you may be inclined to invest in additional clothing pieces. Living minimally keeps us mindful of how much we consume, and it'll take some practice to avoid impulsive purchases moving forward. But you may find that as you swap out pieces, you'd like to invest in better fitting clothing. So here are some things to keep in mind. A great way to make sure you stay on budget is to set your clothing budget based on what you've been able to sell as you've decluttered. When you get into the process of buying and selling used clothing, you'll also get a sense of what pieces retain their value over time. Try to invest in quality pieces that can still be sold in the long run if something doesn't work out. You can find quality used articles of clothing on sites such as ThreadUp, Poshmark, or your local thrift stores. Remember to refer to your initial mood board or list to make sure your purchases fit your plan and don't stray from it. If you still want to buy trendy pieces or items specifically for special events, consider doing a clothing exchange, borrowing from a friend, or renting from sites such as Rent the Runway. Also, Consider holding off from purchases for at least 30 days before you take the plunge, taking time to consider how many times you'll actually wear the clothing piece that you want to buy, and see whether or not it's worth the investment to you. Last but not least, you can keep things simple with an everyday uniform, but here are some ideas to style a minimalist closet. If you're going out for a special event, accessories will bring your outfit together. Having one statement, pair of earrings or jewelry can help pull together a look and keep it differentiated. On the flip side, you can tone down your outfits with a pair of sneakers or play around with layers such as sweaters and jackets. Keep your minimalist wardrobe fresh by always seeking inspiration. 
See how others style their basics and play around with the different ideas and outfit combinations. Perhaps you can tuck your top in a different way, or go completely monochromatic with your outfit. Don't be afraid to mix things up and try new combinations, as neutral, staple pieces will be the perfect base and starting point. Building a capsule wardrobe was the first and one of my favorite areas of simplifying my life. So I hope you found this video helpful. If this topic was right up your alley, let me know in the comments if you'd also want a video on how I plan my minimalist closet for the upcoming year, or leave any other suggestions below, and be sure to upvote your favorites. You can also check the page on my blog called Wear for more on sustainable clothing brands and my minimalist closet. Remember that clothing doesn't ultimately define you and that minimalism helps you use less to focus on what's most important. We can still have fun with our closets, but a simple, functional wardrobe also opens up time to spend with others or doing hobbies and passion projects. It's important to be gentle with yourself during the process. Remember why you're doing so, and hopefully you'll be encouraged along the way. Again, thanks everyone for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.